There it is. Wait, wait, wait. Have you seen the, do you have it yet? Not yet, no. Refreshing. There it is. There we go. Okay, we're here. We're just, we're having te technical difficulties as human beings today. It's Tuesday. <laughs> just not going well. So, um, the, when you described it, you didn't call it episode nine? Just I thought I did. You, I thought I, I you said something else. Marital hate episode nine. I have thanks for joining. Thanks for joining was the um, subject line. Oh, it was under the subject line. Oh, that's all I've done. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we are still working the kinks out, and unfortunately, I have not been feeling well, so I haven't been doing much. And Doug has been very, very busy with his job search. He did give me um, <coughs> some of the pieces of like marketing stuff that I needed. But, um, yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. But, um, you know, I, w if I was healthy enough to work, I would be working, not disabled. So, um, yeah, the goal is to try to get, um, you know, make some progress on it. But it's going to be slow. And, you know, I think that, uh, like, one of the things that we have to do is go through and make smaller clips for people who right. don't have, like, long attention spans. We, well, we, we already figured out some of those clips will be the... <laughs> Yeah, I think there's you know, going to have to be like a whole um, series yeah. of me playing with my boobs on the internet, which I think we should save for OnlyFans because, you know. Well, you could probably make more money that way. We're um, not, yeah. Definitely. I'm, you know, I really, I, I'm not picky these days. We just, um, you know, I just want to have a place to live. <laughs> uh, it would be nice, you know, if we had income coming in. A roof over um, our head. Rich uncle dies or uncle. like a, I don't know, like a, I don't know. I only have one uncle left. Do you have any lot. uncles? Do you have uncles? I have lots of relatives. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have you, rich uncles. You, uh, you have your, rich relatives. You hear more from your dead parents than I hear from my family. Yeah, every, every once in a while I get Sorry, a message dead here parent and there. jokes. <laughs> uh, you got to tell the owl story. That's a good one. I can tell that. I saw four owls on the way to the little store, which is about a quarter mile down the street. We have the little burrowing owls that were out in force tonight. There's actually a lot yeah, more. Yeah, but that's not the was. story about the owl. No, it's not the no. These no. owl stories. Mm. The owl. Story. The owl story. Uh, my dad passed away. It was a year later. Um, he died in February. His birthday was in early March. I was driving home two in the morning. Um, hot date. I, I probably. No, it was nothing hot. This was before me. Life. Yeah, but my life heated up of late. Uh, so, anyways, so I'm driving my '68 yellow '68 Plymouth Fury, and this owl comes down. And little do, little do any of the viewers know that my, my dad's CB handle, and it stuck, was the owl, right? So he was the owl. My mom was a sparrow. So well, everything. called him Owly. Uh, yeah, so we ended up calling him Owly. I never, you know, I used to call him Pa, and then it was, uh, then it was Owly. So we had all, like, in the office, like, people would give us owl stuff. It was just owl pictures, owl statues, owl this, owl that. My mom wore owl jewelry. Um, and... Uh, so it was like a big thing. It was it was he was like the wise old old owl. He's a professor, whatever. So, so I'm driving home on his birthday, the year after he had passed, um, and this great horned owl comes down and flies over my left front fender, and I'm driving my big old fury, and it just hovered there for like what it seemed like an eternity, and it's in the middle of the night, and then you see this giant wingspan, you know, just come down and hover. And it, it like it just seemed so purposeful, like that it, that it came to hover over my car first, and like kind of went with me for a while, like oh, it was almost guiding me, kind See, of a thing. This just goes to show how much you need to take a Stacy story with a shaker of salt, because my version of that story is it's the night that you were coming home from the psychic. And the owl oh. followed you the whole way no. home. No, that was a different. That was a different <laughs> so, thing. I went to. Uh, see, I went, I, so what happens is if you tell me. Yeah. So I'll remember. I'll never remember your name. I'm sorry. It's just a thing I have trouble with. But I'll remember every detail of your life. And I like. I will remember stuff that you're like. How do you know that? And I'll be like, Oh, you told me. And you'll be like, No, I did. And I'll be like, How else would I know that? And so, um, yeah, I um, I will remember details about you. But I do have a tendency to get things confused. And so if you tell me more than one story, they might get mashed together. Um, or, I, you know, maybe I just throw a little dramatic flair in there. I really don't. Like, that's the thing about it is I'd love to do stand-up. But I think in order to do stand-up, A, you have to have a fucking point, which I never do. And B, <laughs> you have to be able to, like, amp up the story. And I feel like my stories are ridiculous enough as they are. Yeah, you almost have to add those little bits in the middle. 
that like Bert Kreischer, 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 whatever. Bert Kreischer yeah. does that. Like he'll add those things in the middle that really just they don't you you don't lose the plot, but like they just add to them and just it just increase. Well, and, and and that's like the been my thing lately is I feel like I'm like I don't know if I'm um like Theo Vaughn or if I'm Bert Kreischer and his wife Leanne, who's as he describes her a redneck. Uh, I found like what happens when they have a kid because they have two kids, Isla and uh, what's the other Georgia? No. Georgia. Yeah, Georgia, Georgia and Isla. No. Um, and if you haven't seen Razzle Dazzle, his new stand-up special, you have to see it. Um, but I want you to tell the story the way it's meant. So you did go to a psychic after that. Oh, at some many point. years later. So he's yeah, lost many, both of his parents. Many years later, I, I go to a psychic. Um, very well-known psychic and Facebook friend Maureen Hancock in a um, it was probably a, a theater maybe two three hundred people so like when you like go to one of these it's like two three hundred people but you pay you don't know that you're gonna get a reading no no you're not you're, you're just going it's part cheap. of the crowd and uh, no, it was probably like 25 bucks something like that right so well, that's not that bad well back I, then, I don't, now I don't rem- probably, yeah I don't remember it concert, being like crazy. all event tickets have doubled since COVID uh, yeah right right it's crazy now kid rock yeah. tickets were 150 bucks a pop but you're like very picky about seats well, I think when you go to something, you got to have good seats, right? Otherwise, you're up in, like, when we saw The Who, we're in the 300 section of the garden. I kind of don't even consider myself have, of seeing... What about the Dwight Yoakam I mean, thing? Did you think we were... Or that's a pretty That small was okay. Theater. I mean, that was okay, because it was a small theater. We were, like, maybe 10 rows back in the balcony. I had seen him a bunch of times, whatever. So, but it was, like, it was good. It wasn't... See, a definition of a good show for me is I leave there covered in sweat, maybe, like, Couple scrapes, bruises, things of that nature. You have to experience like a rock and roll show. Well, there's a country show. Pits for the elderly. <laughs> break, <laughs> break a hip. hip. <laughs> um, but like something like a Dwight Yoakam, you're going to see the craftsmanship of it. You're seeing like the versions of the song he does. Things uh, like that. I listen. I think Dwight Yoakam is a uh, showman. I think he's a, he's a well. I don't know how much of a showman he is now. Maybe he was when he was younger. This I don't know. The... It's his outfits and this music. Oh is yeah, good. yeah no, the whole thing. But I'm telling you, uh, Rob Linus, the Rob Linus band stole the show. Yeah, if you you guys are country music fans. Look no, at this. you don't even have to be a country well, music fan yeah. to like Rob Linus. He has a song, um, I Got a Drinking Problem, but um, I, I Ain't Got a Drinking Problem. Drinking's Drink got, got a problem, problem with me. Yeah. Uh, no, a lot it's... of great, great songs. And everything's like, they. he he says that you'll always catch him playing at a dive bar, which is interesting mm-hmm. to see him on the same stage as Dwight Yoakam, well, who's I, like I'm, the Liberace of country music. I follow him music. on Instagram, and he is he is working. You know, he's legit. Wait, Rob Linus? Yeah, he's legit. I would he's love legit. to see him again. I don't really know how, actually, it's crazy because... What I need is like a young person to like show me all of this stuff because mm. I don't understand how any of it works. Like, Inst- I have Instapost. Facebook, I've had Facebook since college. When I was in college, Kelly... you were a returning student, it wasn't like, it yeah, was, I went back it wasn't to like college. you were I part of the military and I like went back stacking to... into the internet in 1983. Uh, no, <laughs> but um, I went to college as a returning student, I graduated in 2007. I'm in the library, we're studying for midterms. Uh, we're, or I think we were doing a group project or something, and it was me, Kelly Loke, and some other girl. And Kelly, who's like, it's so weird, because she was like this cute little Patriots cheerleader when I met her in college, and now she's like a mom with beautiful children. I don't know what that beeping noise is. Someone's Tesla is going to explode. It's a warning. It's a, it's, it's a warning. We do have lightning warning sirens here in Florida, but that think, that's not I one of them. I think somebody ordered food to the wrong address. <laughs> Did that, somebody deliver food to us here at the podcast? Thank you so much. That's very nice of you. <laughs> I'm in the mood oh, for yeah, some wait, fried clams. Fried clams? It's like 80-something degrees. It's super humid here. I do not want clams. No, I did. I, I want, like, I want a cold New England day with chowder, but I just, I don't want it. No, I'm also with that. We could but, simulate that. What the hell is going on next? I don't think anybody's there. Like, I think that house is empty mm. for the season. Mm. Um, anyway. Um, so, back to our story. So, you were talking about graduating Facebook... Graduate. Oh, so so uh, we were in the library, and they like kept saying F- Facebook, but I had never heard of Facebook. So I was like, "What?" And she's like, "Facebook." And finally, they, just, they had to tell it to me like I'm five because I thought they were saying Facebook or baseball. I'm like, "What are you talking about, baseball?" So anyway, I got on it, and and I'm such like I was such the old person. I'm like sharing my notes from class with everybody, trying to be the mom. And then of course, people found out that about my notes because I type. I would write my notes by hand, and I would type them up. That's how mm-hmm. I learned. Or I prefer to learn by doing things because I, um, if I do things, I, I can right away. If you explain it to me, right away. But um, I don't have, I don't have a lot of attention span, as has probably been evident to our viewers. So anyway, 
Uh, the long and the short of it is um, the old lady finally on Facebook shared her mm. notes with the, all the kids at college and I don't know what to do with any of the social media. I have like, I don't know, like 4,000 Facebook friends. I got like, I don't know, like 5,000 LinkedIn connections. LinkedIn, I got all these recommendations and stuff, which are great, mm. except I don't have a job. It's starting to rain. It's raining. We could. We, well, we may have to. We are, slide on, we are under back. the cover right here, just well, on just on the you're precipice. Cover. I'm, I don't know. I'm going to tilt this up so you can kind of see where. Like that's where the screen ends, right and here. we're right about here. Yeah. So. so we may have to just scoot the table back a little bit, or even. But we are here. We're dedicated. We will go Florida through the rain. rain. Florida rain <laughs> is down. no. Oh, I'm already getting. Is no joke. Let's scooch right, the table. We're going to scooch. One. Oh, my side is scooching. Sorry, guys. Just one second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have if enough sense. If it's raining, I gotta do my nightly radar. Uh, it's ha photo. <laughs> it, we have we have enough sense to come out of the rain. <laughs> just barely that much sense. We're just barely out of the rain, and I'm still like I think I'm getting wet. So the flamingos are out of luck. They're getting wet. Actually, one of those flamingos they're back there. They're waterfowl, aren't they? Well, well to be wet? no, I don't think. Well, yeah, maybe they are. I don't know if they're foul, but um, they're certainly. Pink. Um, anyways, one of the, one of those made it through the hurricane in the pool. It was out of the pool, was in the pool, in the pool, out of the pool. And I posted a photo on the Cape Coral site, and people posted theirs, which had broken free, and they were in trees and all over the place. So there was a whole flamingo uh, um, debris situation. So this is a nice pitter patter. <laughs> of we Florida don't know Lanai. if you can hear us through the rain on the metal roof of our Lanai. I don't know where we would film inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, inside is a kind of a, so, you know. Here we all right, go. Well, all right, so here, here we go. Here's the radar right here. Not much going on. Just just a sprinkle. But so it does, it'll pass in. It does look like. So um, we'll just talk real loud. <laughs> it does look like the Aleutian Islands, though. I'll have, to, I'll have to post that. Food next door. All right, so what, is the, so, what did you think it looked like? Uh, it looked like the Aleutian food? Islands, um, I think. Did like, you screenshot it? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll have to do that. And I'll, and it, what the hell stay tuned for What the hell are the Aleutian Islands? In Alaska. Yeah, okay. Alaska does not have islands. It's cold there. It has icebergs. <laughs> it's where the Titanic sank. <laughs> no, <laughs> Titanic sank in Alaska. Um, you heard it here, folks. Those people off the coast of Nova Scotia, where did, where did... three miles down, they didn't <laughs> find the Titanic. The Titanic actually went around through, was Panama Canal even built? Okay, no, they would have had to go us, around Tierra del Fuego back up to Alaska. For those of us who are not obsessed with Kate Winslet, please explain oh, to like me... Please explain to us what the hell happened with the Titanic. Okay, there's a there's a ship. Oh, it's an expanded well, voyage. Do you want we love you. Hey, Leonardo, come on board. You will never get an Oscar. Did he ever get one? There was room on that door for that that moment. Do you haven't gotten he didn't get that an point? Oscar for that? No, no he has saying, one since. But yeah, what did he get it for? Since. The Revenant. So it was you kind of a makeup Oscar for Wolf of Wall Street because he was so good in that. Oh, we love Wolf of Wall Street. We saw Wolf of Wall Street in the theater I twice. Think. I think I saw it three you times. You might have seen it three times, yeah. Uh, we bought um, it as soon as it was out on Amazon. So We've watched it so many times. It's um, it's basically like Goodfellas with financial people kind of a thing. It's like Boiler Room, and it's obviously it's it's the same story. It's the Jordan Belfort story. Uh, it's like Boiler Room meets Goodfellas, mm. and it's just fantastic. And uh, uh, what's his name? is uh, Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Amazing. Yep. Amazing. Actually, your old boss was My like his cousin My old boss was Jonah's something. cousin. And um, so, and the only thing I remember about them when they were talking was that uh, Jonah was just like being famous was just horrible. Like it just you couldn't go anywhere, you couldn't do anything. Um, he was just getting you know like. His, um, have you seen his his? Um, I forget what it's called, but <laughs> can you hear us at all? Our top stories tonight. <laughs> It's like a, it's like a rush drum a solo. Bit more, I'm, I'm, I can yeah, we can pull. Ooh, I'm getting wet, <laughs> and not in a good way. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Did you hear what I said? I said it was sounded like a, a rush drum solo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody, <laughs> uh, side note: Somebody mentioned the podcast the other day, then they said that. Rush Limbaugh needed to be replaced, and I was the woman to do it. Oh my God, Rush! <laughs> Rush isn't coming down for breakfast. He died, right? Yeah, I think he died. died. That's yeah. why he, he did. Um, he's dead. Oh God, the he's dead story. Can you please turn down the volume of the rain? No, we can't. 
That was actually a song uh, back in the 50s. Can't Turn down the volume of the falling rain. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. No, I'm just... I'm, no, it was the rhythm of the rain. And I just made uh, a little it's, funny. It seems to be passing. Very little. All right, so now I think I we're in the clear. I get a nice moist rub down. A moist oh, it's, rub down. It's, it's, it's still coming down, but it's You not, can see it in the pool. You can see it on the rain. screen. Y'all, rain in Florida <laughs> is no joke. It'll come down golf ball size. It's craziness. Okay, so we, we have been all over the place, all around the world, and I don't know okay. why you're on your phone right now. We're I, in the I'm middle just of seeing place. where our, our our storm is. Where it's we're almost in. done. So it's we're, almost I think done. We're we should be good. There might be one more little... So we, drum, we, um, there may be one more drum solo. Well, we started out with the owl story. We're going to talk about the psychic. We went awry with movies. Oh, so back to um, so uh, Wolf of Wall Street. If you haven't seen it, you should see it. Um, Jonah Hill, also excellent in his um, documentary he did with his psychiatrist that's on Netflix. Ooh. You haven't watched no, it. No, I haven't. You definitely should. It's all about getting to the core of the issue and having some skills from the outset. And I think especially that's it's an effective method, especially for men, because y'all don't like to get to that, you know, it's hard for you to talk about things. It's hard for you to be vulnerable. And you're not getting anything out of therapy if you're not going in there and being vulnerable. And so I think that his, um, his he's got some good strategies. Um, and, you know, if you can, and I think that's like, life is hard. Uh, is you got to have strategies for every situation. Like, like got, rain. We knew, like, we, we pull, like, a foot back that well, way. We're we also had planned to, roof. like, check the weather and be inside. But today's podcast almost didn't come together, mm. and that's a whole other story. It's not a good Tuesday. thing. Uh, yeah, Doug's having a bad day, um, and uh, I brought up a subject I should not have brought up. One thing that we've talked about before is we are very different politically, and um, I asked, I'm not going to get into this topic, but I had asked him how he felt, uh, what his thoughts were on the whole Trump thing. And I wanted to hear. I honestly wanted to hear what he had to say. And uh, my thing was that I felt like the left was um, giving him free advertising. It's like, whether you agree with him or not, that's a bad strategy if you're trying to defeat someone because all it did was amp up his base. Doug uh, shared his thoughts about Trump, mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to drop the subject. He wasn't ready to, yada, yada, yada. We had a fight. Podcast is called Marital Hate. We fight sometimes, just like you and just like every other married couple out there. And the bottom line is, at the end of the day, uh, I wanted to give up on the podcast. I wanted to cry because I don't want to fight with my husband. He's my best friend. And also, he does all the cooking and shopping and cleaning, mm. so I have to put up with him. But, um, you know, cooler heads prevailed, and here we are. And, of course, got cooled off by the it rain. It was. Um, but, you know what? I, we, we said we we're going to be real. Yeah, why not? Let's, let's let's be real. But it was insensitive of me to pull out my Trump pinata and start whacking at it and trying to get the candy out of it. That was a little insensitive. Well, it's not even that it's insensitive. It's just that we're not going to get anywhere with it, no. right? And we don't want to... No. Like, I can respect someone's right to disagree with me. I respect your right to your opinion. I try to understand your opinion and see where you're coming from. And Doug and I have discussed Trump ad nauseum, as, um, among many other topics. And... Um, I know why he feels how he feels, and he knows why I feel how I feel. And um, you know, I, that's not to say I'm a, um, I, you know, I think Trump's, you know, awesome. I have a lot of issues with him. But if you want somebody in office that you're going to agree with about everything, you better vote for the person you're looking in the mirror at. And I, I got to be honest with you, I don't even always agree with myself. I'm a mm. conflicted person, in case you can't tell. So as as it uh, as it pertains to Trump, my. Uh, the reason why I like him, despite all of the glaring, glaring flaws, is because the machine doesn't like him, and I think the system is broken. And short of, again, dropping out of society and starting a hippie commune, anybody got land? Um, <laughs> I um, And also a place to live, because I work, you know, money's running out. <laughs> It's like an hourglass. We should have like an hourglass. Yeah. We should have a tote board. So, oh my god, we could have like a Let's little. Let's have a tote board. Like, a reverse tote website, board. Like one of those wheels. Yeah, yeah. Doug and Stacy run out of money. Oh, bought gum today. There mm. goes two Choo -choo grand. Teams, you know. There goes twenty so. two hundred. Mm. <laughs> it hasn't been small bills. It's all been mm. big bills lately. Well, it's it's the thing. Like, well, we don't do anything, right? Oh, we don't really go anywhere. Bucks. We don't. You know, it's always like. It's always like. The, the random, oh my god, don't don't get me started on that. They have escalated. I hope, you know, you, you guys following along at home, they have escalated the uh, the uh, the case, um, which was code for, uh, I'm getting this guy off the phone because he sounds difficult. <laughs> um, another thing, you know, we were just talking about how we, we differ and stuff like that, but we, we had another discussion today about how um, 
when we, like we were we were playing Mario or something like that, and and you were going ahead, and I was kind of getting frustrated because you were taking the lead and and all that stuff. So then we got in this discussion that about that was yesterday. Yeah, that was yesterday. So today we were talking about, and this is something that I fully fully fess up to. I have a hard time when people are better at stuff than me. I like. I want to be the best guitar player, and like when I see like you are the best it, guitar. It, player. No, no, I'm I'm far from it. Um, but but the, so like when or I, like I want to be the best painter. I want to be this. I want to be that. Um, the um, it's, so I was like thinking about it. It's like yeah, I I yeah, I want to you know I want to be the funniest. I want to be you know like the best designer. I want to have the best ideas. I want to you know all that. Yeah, but don't but, you want your wife to have some success? Yeah, no, it, absolutely, in her life? absolutely, no, I, like, absolutely. Today I was like literally like. I literally can't even like get up and like cook myself a meal. Like I can't get up and clean no. the house. And you need to be better at everything than me. Like can't I just be better at Mario than well, I've been like? I'm better like, at, you're I get, better getting, at getting getting up and and making dinner. I'm better than that. No, I'm yes, just kidding. But, but there there but is. My point yeah. is okay. So you're better at Mario Kart. Yeah, because you Mario Kart it. makes me queasy. Mm -hmm. I like look at the screen and I want to throw up. Um, Maybe there's a different Mario Kart that's not like all of the. Oh no, that's stuff, all of it. That's that makes me want to yak. I I, it, I was not like this when I was younger. It's as I got older, it's something that happened. It makes me want to yak, so I can't play it. But Mario World Wii, I have been playing forever since the anime club used to come to my house every Friday. And when they weren't eating ramen noodles or, or Oreos or playing, uh, making wearing my clothes and putting on fashion shows it's a or very doing strange like group in the backyard, that they had over there. They would be playing Super Mario Wii. Yep. They called me the OG, original yep. gamer. I would have to come out and bail their asses out. Mm. Thank you, Jacob and Nora and yeah. Victoria and Veronica and Anna and Noelle and every other kid. Oh, God, I could Adam and oh, mm. I could picture all these kids' faces. And they've all been uh, all dressed Nora, up in your clothes, it sounds like. Uh, it was... Angie. Um, God, I can't even remember all the kids, and I've been, um, or Jammin, whatever his name was, or so, uh, Ethan. There Nora, were so many Kitty of them. Cat, just, yeah, Moses, Nora, yeah, Nora. Nora is, uh, all these kids are all grown up. They're all grown up. Some of them are even married. We are so old. That's anyway, crazy. The point That's is crazy. that so. um, I am better at Mario World Wii than Doug. However, he does this bubbling thing that I can't do. I bubble. We're going to have to do a bubbling episode where we explain it to you. But the bottom line is... Um, the we have uh we had yesterday we had an argument today we had an argument because we're both really stressed out and um you know sometimes we argue just usually we're able to turn around quickly doug used to it used to be that he would just shut down and not talk to me for days and since i called him out on the podcast he hasn't done it so good job guys <laughs> although we hadn't had like an argument mm. until like yesterday mm. So we're together all the time. Yeah. Like you're bound to get on each other's nerves. I haven't called you milk face yet. So that's a good sign. Okay. I don't know why you screamed it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you were passively aggressively calling me milk face. Back to the story okay. about the owl and the, or it wasn't. The psychic and the owl. And so whatever. I think that there was a psychic and an owl. Did they happen at the same time? No, they happened uh, like 25, 30 years apart. I thought it was the same night. <laughs> it was not. It was not. Maybe that was my. Uh, I was bereft of uh, putting things in, in time. But maybe I lumped together I my psychic situations that I've had. I will say this about me: my attention span is like mm. about that much of a net, mm. and because of it, sometimes you have to like tell a story faster or with interesting details, mm. or you lose me, and that's kind of a problem because I have a lot of friends that are like slow to get to a point, and. It, and I like I don't mean to be an asshole, mm. but like I like I want it like I can't just sit there like I have to interact with them in some way. I need to like agree with them or like ask questions or like I I have to be like immersed in in the story mm. or I forget. So perhaps uh, I wasn't paying attention on me mm. my personal flaw uh, when you originally told me these two stories, but yeah. in my mind one story. Well, I, it, it's hard, too, because you tell me about your life and things like that, and it's hard to, like, kind of abstract that back over time. Especially if you're not there you. to yeah, see things and, you know, whatever. Like, yeah, you're always like, oh, when I, mean, I lived here or lived there, and I'm like, when did you live there? And I can't even know. remember yeah. all of it, but yeah. I'm 47, and we have been together 10 years. That's 37 years before you. That I have to make sense of, whereas I had 46 years of stuff, of psychics, of owls flying out of the sky, of cool cars like the 68 Fury 3. I was in a cracks in the Fury when I was a kid. Mm. 
See, it was kismet. I fell in the laundry basket. You fell right in the laundry basket. Because I was not buckled properly. Mm. My grandfather's car. It was car. the 70s. I don't imagine it went over well. I remember right where it was, right before the Brightman Street Bridge, which no longer exists, going down. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Um, so anyway, the story. So anyways, um, we I went to um, see Maureen Hancock. If if you I know she's on the South Shore. She's fantastic and she's super funny, um, and she's got she's got the greatest uh, Boston accent. Um, anyway, she puts on these shows and um, and she'll like you know whoever kind of comes to her she'll mm -hmm. she'll pull out, and um, you know hundreds of people and and some of the stuff that happened you know earlier in the night w was just amazing it was just absolutely amazing, um, and so um, she's like somebody over here lost their mom and I'm I'm like raise my hand and the guy behind me raised my hand. And he goes, you, you two stand up. She starts walking towards us. She goes, no, not you, you. And she starts talking to me. And it was kind of a, a tumultuous time in my life or whatever at the time. And um, You were going through your divorce. Yeah. And she, and she, she's like, I don't know, she grabbed my hand. I don't know, whatever. She goes, she goes, your mom wants to tell you, like, um, you're getting the raw end of the deal. And I'm like, uh, and that's kind of something. That's kind of something. I'm like, okay, I'm not really buying that's it yet. That's something she used to say about your dad a lot, and, too. And then, yeah. Oh, for sure. So, um. So then she goes, well, um, she's smoking. And I'm like, well, that could have been a guess, right? But all you folks out there that enjoy the smoking, when you're dead, it doesn't doesn't matter, right? So apparently you guys have something to look forward to. I'll be in the non-smoking section of, of heaven. So and then um, there was some other stuff. And she goes, you got to focus on your music and things like that. Like, And then it started clicking. Like they were, And she says, you know, you might not, you know, like I might not nail it right now, but you'll think of it tomorrow and, and all that stuff. And um, it was pretty legit. And um, the, the the neat thing about it is, like, the next day I go to work and I was like, th you know, I, this is what happened to me. It was a, it was a really, really neat experience. And um, for whatever reason, my nose got, like, freezing cold. Like, my just the tip of my nose was, like, freezing cold from it. And um, so I wrote, I wrote to Maureen. I'm like, does this happen? She's like, no, I've never heard of that before. But it could be something. Because like, she doesn't know. She, like, she was, I, apparently, she was in a car accident, never had these powers, and then had the, had the, uh, had the powers. So you were, just, you were a laundry basket away from having these powers. Um, I am a little psychic. So I think, I think everybody can. I am a little psychic. Be. Really? Don't you think so? Yeah, but I think that's I think that's like a woman thing. I think women are more in, in tune with that. Women with our evil powers burn the best seek. See, see, there's something that I'm you're better than me at. Women powers. Woman powers. <laughs> I would hope I would be better at I, women powers. And you beat than me at the titty game. What do you mean, like, because I smack you in the head with the tit? No, 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 the titty game. I, I have sometimes. No, I'm, uh, sometimes I or sometimes he'll be on the couch and I'll walk up behind him and just on his head because it hits him on the head and then they go to the side because yeah, you know. It's, um, it's, it's that's how they do. It's, it's 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 physical harassment is what it is. Okay. So, anyways, um, I'm, I know I'm leaving a lot out that she communicated for my mom and whatever, but like it was legit, and I will, I will go to go to my grave um, saying that. And we've had some other things. I've had some other um, other things happen that just like defy explanation um, in regards to either recently deceased or or deceased people and things like that. And it's just you know. I think there's an energy there, and I don't know where the energy goes, or maybe maybe it can come back, maybe it maybe it, you, you just run into it every once in a while, that kind of thing. But um, it's you know I, I I always think like I carry my parents with me anyways, right? So there's that that energy, and uh, end up I end up turning sort of sort of turning into my dad a little bit. Um, but my brother Steve, who took after my mom's side of the family, turned really turned into my dad because he talks just like him. But then I think my brother Phil turned into my mom, which is really weird because he looks a lot like my dad. So I don't know where this stuff nets out, but um, I hope you guys are open to it. Maureen Hancock, fantastic. Um, look her up. Go see one of the shows. Um, and uh, you never know if you have if you have like I had, but you're uh, not guaranteed a reading. If no, somebody, you're not guaranteed a reading. In the crowd, you don't know who it's going to be. But it's super entertaining. You might get a reading um, if you know, and if you're open to it, whatever. Um, if you're not open to that, which some of my friends were, um, like next day at work, I was like, "This is what happened to me. This psychic, whatever." Oh, I don't want to hear about it. And they were like really which deeply is religious really people. Really interesting because like a lot of Catholics in particular, and mm. I, I say this as someone who was raised Catholic. Um, it's the more a devout devout a Catholic is, it seems the more they are into um, um, this kind of thing, for mm. lack of a better term. Like um, 
that 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 it's very closely tied. And if you look at even like the, the I actually we talked about this a little bit yesterday. But even if you look at the roots of Christianity, mm -hmm. I mean the root of Christianity, a lot of it was paganism. I mean a lot of the Easter traditions, eggs symbolize fertility. Um, a lot of the traditions that that actually I was just reading a bunch of them. Um, so the um, Easter um, comes from the um, uncertain, um, but it could be the spring goddess Istor. Others think Estart, the, the Phoenician fertility goddess. But anyway, gods of other faiths. The rabbits are handed down from ancient ceremonial and symbolism of European and Middle Ages pagan spring festivals. Mm. The eggs, again, um, they hunt um, for the eggs, and it's a fertility rite. The whole thing is about fertility rite, and... Um, and that's why you get a new outfit, like cause, because, and it, it was considered, this is from the giant book of superstitions, it was considered discourteous and therefore bad luck to greet Scandinavian, the Scandinavian goddess of spring, Esther, in anything but fresh garb. And of course, the sunrise services um, were performed at the vernal equinox. Um, so, um, which was, um, is a great, um, performed a vernal equinox welcoming the sun and it's great power to bring new life to all growing things. So this is also from the uh, Celebrations, the Complete Book of American Holidays. All this information was from JW.org because I went to the Jehovah's Witness yes website yesterday right. after I scared the bejesus out of the They're giving you an actual information. Like I think the growing season is represented by the Easter grass, the plastic stuff you put in the... I like thing. the edible Easter grass that you, you can get it at Target. It tastes like communion wafers or like, remember flying sausage, but without the pellets in the middle? But be careful because they will cut you if you eat them wrong. Mm. Have you ever gotten a cut from one of those? I've only ever eaten one um, that you gave me because it was like, yeah, we used to eat these. I used to eat stuff like Bub's Daddy and Jolly I would Ranchers literally, and... I would literally just sit there and eat a whole bag. I have sat there and eat a whole bag of it. Obviously, I'm not going to do that this year. Bag of we were on. We didn't even celebrate Christmas mm. this year because we was broke. We did for the kids. That was it. Yeah, we did a little something. A little um, something, something. Yeah. Um, but feel free to send us colored eggs in the mail. <laughs> do not send us raw. Um, Rotten, eggs. rotten hard boiled eggs. Do not eggs. send us hard boiled eggs. We do not want hard boiled eggs. Um, so that was East. So we were talking about Easter. We were talking. Why do you have to be on your phone all the I'm time? I'm going to make sure that we don't get any crazy comments. I'm looking at the comments right here. Yeah. That's my job. Okay. Well, I get comments on mine, right? Or do you um, have? Or can you see? I'm mine? seeing both of them. Oh, okay. All right. So um, I don't. It's like you don't even know what I do. Um, I don't know. So back to uh, I don't know how I brought up Jesus. Oh, uh -huh. so Catholics tend to be the most um, down with this stuff. And it was interesting. The um, I, I've always been, because I was raised Catholic and had that, like, very limited exposure. So I had, like, I thought my grandfather was a priest for one of those funny religions because he was an alcoholic. Whole other story. If you haven't heard it, I think that's on episode four, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway... Um, I, that, I, I knew that. I knew that there were Jews and they couldn't have bacon. And I knew that there were um, people with um, turbans, and I knew that there were monks, like um, Buddhist monks. But as a kid, I didn't really have a lot of exposure outside of Catholicism. And interestingly, actually, at Catholic high school, Coyle Cassidy now closed, nuns in the attic, um, it, um, we actually learned about different faiths in our religion class. Um, it was actually a really good class. I can't remember who taught it, but I remember having it with a bunch of my friends. and. Um, God, I had him for something else too, but it, it was a really good class and it was, you talked about other faiths. We had to learn about other faiths and their, you know, their basic doctrine. And then also, um, we learned about, um, you know, relationships and personal autonomy and, um, you know, choosing the right person in marriage. And I just was too young. And I, I mean, honestly, I don't think I was too young, but like when I was in high school, I was going through so much. I'd been bounced from one place to the other, to the other. Um, and so it was really hard and, um, I was really struggling, like really struggling in ways people will never know. Um, and so I couldn't like learn anything in school at that point. Like I really just couldn't learn anything. I was literally just there to get the stamp on the, on mm -hmm. the diploma. So, um, anyway, I, like when I think back now, I think like, especially as I feel like I've finally gotten myself to a good place is that um, despite the fact that we're broken, I have a chronic illness that cripples me, 
um, is because of so many of the things that I learned through that class and about being, um, you know, just taking, you know, your life and what you want for yourself. There was just a lot of really good things in it. But the other thing that I thought was interesting is, so I had always been curious. So I had read a book called Zen Spirit, Christian Spirit, and it was about the similarities between Christianity and Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were many far more similarities than differences. I don't even remember the differences, to be honest with you. Um, and then I went on to see a film. Um, I think it's on Amazon. It's called Zeitgeist, which I highly, highly mm -hmm. recommend. It talks a lot about how the media is owned by the same five companies, and that's both liberal and conservative media. Um, and they actually had an announcement they did, which I'm sure you've seen the YouTube clip of or TikTok or whatever, but it's all these news stations saying the exact same thing at the same time. And it was just basically like, believe us, we will tell you the truth. But, you know, it's just the fact that they all said the exact same thing and then they were able to play it like that. It, it just seemed very dystopic. Uh, much like <laughs> The Handmaid's Tale, which you oh are not enjoying me watching. Anyway, um, I, uh, dystopic. Um, I definitely, so they also talked about how um, there's a Christ character in every faith um, that's the son of God. And it's just viewed differently in different faiths. Um, you can't hide Jesus. We'll find you. And in all these different phases, we're going to find you. are showing up while we're playing video games. <laughs> that wasn't even the Jesus. I want, no, that, like, I Jehovah's want, like Witness. I said, bring back badass Jesus. That's what we need. We need, like, some, like, the dogma, like, you know, dogma that he did a good job at rebranding mm -hmm. Jesus in a good way. I don't know that you could ever brand the Catholic Church in a healthy way. They, that's one you don't come back from. What, branding? Uh, like, oh, like, like relocating child molesters and hi hiding mm -hmm. their story. Like, that's a hard one to get. Well... I don't know you're going to save yourself from that one. Every, everybody's got a, a few bad apples. Some it have was, bad apples, and then me? you have other people that cover up that, for the bad apples. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, but this was like, it went oh, all no, the no, way it was, up. Yeah. It, it was it was, it was as bad as it gets. As bad as it was for these people to be, you know, so-called religious leaders, and, and mm. uh, I can't. It's just the most disgusting, mm. disgusting thing. But it's not, I mean, like, listen, the, like, I... I I, I have always said, with so much power, power and money and fame corrupt. I'm hoping to be corrupted mm. myself. I'm not going to be corrupted. Do you think I'm capable of being corrupted? But um, I think that with all this comes corruption, and that's where you get things like creepy pedophile priests, and then you get Epstein's Island with all these like high-powered people. Allegedly. Um, allegedly high-powered people. <laughs> well, we, we don't know what they were doing. We, we, we have flight logs, but we don't, we don't know what was going on we there. Even, we think you, it might have been a Quoits we Festival. Have, we've had mo <laughs> more... <laughs> Sorry, I just made a Quoits reference. I don't even know what to do with him right now. The bottom line is there's absolutely no doubt in anyone's mind mm. that young women mm. were trafficked on that island because... It's not okay, folks. Yeah. If you're thinking about doing it, don't. Seriously? Trying to, trying to warn the people. Yeah. Um, and I, I would oh also say, God. last night we were talking about nuns and, and, and things of that nature, but um, you, you, were, you, were, you were talking about um, religions, and I talked about uh, I, how I thought Christ was very like George Harrison, because he was very chill. Um, well, that's what I, like, aspect, back to my chill. version of Jesus. I want the Jesus, like, I want, like, a Jesus that's, like, cool like you've got like other like stuff that you're into that's mm. cool like tell me about that and mm. he would talk to you about it and he would be like and, you know he would you know, like i don't know like i i don't like the this fire and brimstone idea that has been very well ingrained in my head that makes me think every single day that i did something to deserve getting sick i prefer <laughs> jesus that's like how i try to live my life that is like somebody that accepts people for who they are and tries to help them whatever way mm. he can and um respects them um, and treats them with kindness. So that's yeah. how I try to live my life. So what would Jesus do? But I want, like, what would badass Jesus do? So mm. also, I uh, am a pothead who floats around the pool and um, naked, and sometimes I go off riding my Jeep. I will say this, and though, I about never, Jesus. I'm always naked. What? So I will say this about Jesus. The dude must have been on a lot of lot of pressure, right? Because I know I try to live up to my dad's I legacy think we should or whatever. learn more about the this story dude. of Jesus before we go on these biblical tirades. <laughs> this dude. I don't remember his, anything. His father is God Almighty. And he's a carpenter. Nothing wrong with being a carpenter. 
But when, that's a pretty big leap in uh, in in a in, yeah, but you like, know, in, in, I, in performance. See, this is there. the problem. This so then we, he had to go do start doing like the water so tricks. So we're not and stuff. very we're the water tricks. We are not very well read on this topic. I certainly don't remember anything. I just remember. <coughs> Bless you. Sitting through mass in various languages that I did not understand. Latin, Portuguese, and French that I recall off the top of my head. I may nope. have even been to Spanish mass. French. Well, that must be a, that must a be a sexy French, church least. service. Oh, oui, oui. Oh, Jesus. When, you, I don't so, think so. Paul in the Corinthians. Here's the thing. Why am I going? Well, Branding. The that's... Catholics have to divide themselves from sexiness. You cannot have a sexy Catholic church. My, uh, we, my French they accent. They go on that road. They did it wrong. They can be no sexiness in the Catholic church. The, the not, problem, even in French? The problem is is that actually, if, you have, if you've ever watched um, <coughs> Californication, mm. One of our favorite shows. It's a fantastic, fantastic show. Hilarious. Steve Jones is in it. Steve Jones is in it. Um, Rob Lowe Pamela is fantastic Alvin in it. is a standout. She's, I love her. She's, she's like good. a little version of me. Um, Duchovny, great. Duchovny's great. Uh, Natasha Mackel. McElhoney. And then uh, the guy, the guy, uh, the bald guy from Sex and the City. You know who else uh, is I in it? I forget his name. Um, oh, um, what's his name? Um, yeah, to ask me. I don't know. His, I know his name. It'll on come to Sex me. Sex and the City. Um, the um, you know who else is in it that's um, Moody. was really good Moody. is um, Moody is Hank Moody. It's not his name. Hank Moody. And who? What? It's Charlie Runkle. But Charlie Runkle. Who, but yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. Not the actor's Charlie. name. It's, no, but it's no, the no. same actor that plays um, Harry in Sex and the City. So um, Heather Graham's in it uh, in the the final season along mm -hmm. with Michael Imperioli. Imperioli. Yep. Uh, it's it's just such a good show and it's hilarious. But it's you know not for families much like this show. Um, so. Um, what were we going with Californication? Oh, so they had a lot of um, religious references in in the movie, and they were all very blasphemous mm. on some level. Oh, like, yeah, indeed. He got a a, a favor from a nun mm. in a church, and uh, this rock star was Jesus, and he came off the Atticus cross. Atticus Fetch is oh, one of the great fantastic. characters that has ever been in the show. Such a great character. Uh, anyway, it was um, it's definitely worth watching. But I, I, I think um, where I was going with this is somehow I was picking on. Oh, uh, if, so some of our religious friends may be offended by the idea of having a psychic reading, and that's okay. Like if you don't want to take part, that's cool. But you know, let's not tell people they're going to hell for like. Mm. If it's not real, then who cares? Mm. Um, if it's not real, well, so, so far I've I think I've established that there's an afterlife. I think I've established that there's smoking in the afterlife. I don't know if there's smoking in the afterlife. I don't know. I was told. I'm just going by what I was told. I don't. I, first uh, of all, I, well, I think maybe some afterlives are smoking, but in my afterlife there is no smoking, and I think that afterlife is a con state of consciousness. Don't, uh, don't be such a prude. Should, there should be smoke in. There should be weed. I don't. Or there can be party weed. Drugs. I just don't want any smoke. Yeah, oh, light party drugs. I don't drugs. even smoke weed. I do. Heaven. I do cannabis oil, or I vape cannabis <laughs> oil, but I don't smoke it. No, I don't like smoke. I don't in like. General. The, I don't like my smell parents of it. were both smokers, and Ugh. my. I hated the smell of it, and my grandfather would always be like, "Tell your mother to quit smoking." I'm like, uh, "Like really? Like I have any control over right. what this woman does? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Are, are you kidding? Dude, may he rest in peace. But are you fucking kidding me? Wow." <laughs> I had no control over anything. Oh my God! In my life, I well, don't even think I do now. He was, That's what happened. He was her father, disease. and uh, he didn't have any control over the situation or pull. Apparently, uh, well, I guess it was the seventies. Mm. Well, anyway, seventies were a wild time, folks. You know what? Listen, here's my deal. I um, I have worked really hard to forgive um, my um, my mom and my dad. Mm. Uh, for the shit they did when I was a kid. Um, I'm in a good place with how I feel about my mom. I just wish nothing but good things for her. And my dad, I'm a little upset with him about some stuff that is going on, uh, continues to go on. But I'm long over the stuff that happened when I was a kid. I'm trying to work my way through what's going on now. It's hard to forgive somebody for something mm. they're actively doing. Mm. But what are you going to do? Um, and then my, um, but it's, it's the people that enabled that situation. And it's kind of like the Epstein case in a way. Not that it's like the Epstein case in a way or the Catholic church, but it's like. My childhood was like the <laughs> Epstein case. I don't think you can really say that, but go ahead. Well, well technically it was, was but that's a whole other there was craziness thing. going on. But. Um, but I'll say that, um, I'll say that I think it's, um, I don't even know how we got onto this, but, um, for me, it's not so much like it's one thing for a person to make a mistake or a person like, you know, 
a person has a mental illness and their you know their result is negative behavior or a person um, is in crisis or on drugs or whatever you can understand that a, a single person can make a mistake that's easy right like I think we can all like I make mistakes all the time please forgive me when I do make a mistake just call me out on it like I, I'll be like I will feel so terrible because I never want to hurt anybody I will be bawling my eyes and I'll be like I'm so sorry <laughs> Um, cause that's just me. Um, but where was I going with this? Um, telling me, feeling, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, forgiving people. Oh, so forgiving people. So, um, but the issue, the issue I have is I've only recently realized how so much of my, the things that have happened badly to me, people that should have stood up for me just sat there. When you were a kid. When yeah. I was a kid, yeah. and even since I've well, gotten yeah, sick, I mean, even well, since I've gotten since you've sick, been sick, like, and you had some, some um, issues, you know, uh, through my divorce, yeah. like um, it, there's, I yeah, it was the people who I, I can I can deal with like people not helping me like when they should have, but when someone watches something happen to you that is reprehensible and just stands by and allows it, and that's you know. That, that's what bothers me so much about the Epstein case is there were so many people involved and we still don't have answers. And that's what bothers me about the Catholic Church. There were so many people involved and we will never have all the answers, nope. especially since it was primarily boys that were molested. And not, listen, I'm not saying it's tough because I, I believe in forgiving everyone and sometimes it's harder. And I don't know how you forgive a pedophile. I, I guess like... Mm -hmm. When somebody, if somebody was like molested themselves or whatever, this up, upbringing chat, yeah, let's... it's brought to you by Doug and Stacey. But I think like if somebody molests, like, uh, uh, like was molested themselves, it's like more like you're like, oh, okay, that fucked you up, right, right, or um, but that's a horror. That why would that person want to repeat that? Like it's a no, horror it's that... I I don't understand why it happens, but it's the same thing. Why you know, and obviously there's a chemical part of it, but like why addiction is heredi mm. hereditary, you know, hereditary. From a genetic standpoint, but also from a learned standpoint, you know mm -hmm. better. But th there you go. Like, and both you and I kind of overcompensated for that in mm -hmm. our lives. Like we, like we don't drink. Like we'll have like four a year, maybe. I don't know, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe six maybe. a year. Yeah. Like if we're if we're going crazy. Um, I mean, like maybe the year we got married, we might have had one a month. On average, like oh, we're have, always like, celebrating something. We were always celebrating something, so we'd have like a glass of prosecco, like. We'd have two glasses, Ooh, like glass one Saturday, one Saturday for like a birthday, and then a month later we'd have two glasses of prosecco or whatever. But like on separate days, like two glasses of prosecco, I'd be mm. out of my fucking tree. Two yeah. glasses of prosecco, oh my god! So uh, you yeah, so, see me high. someone you recently see posted me that prosecco. they had, had not had a drink in like two hundred days or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I'm easily probably two hundred days out from last time I had alcohol. I can't even remember. Uh, I don't even remember last time I had alcohol. I had iced tea when we went out with uh, the outlaws. Uh, Oh, I did. Ha yeah, I did, actually, I did have. You had a I had, that night. I had some. That was back last year, though. That was way yeah. before Christmas. It was after the. It was after the hurricane. Yeah. But before before Christmas. Yeah. yeah. And anyways, I had I had ago. some like glass skull drink that had smoke coming out of it. It was actually. Well, and if you have lime, yeah. you're not supposed to have. Um, you're not supposed to have uh, alcohol, which you know basically mm. turns into sugar in your body. So, right. um, and I, um, I don't really f like. W it, and it's weird. I, I think a lot of limeys get this where you just don't ever feel drunk. Mm. Um, and if I take my, <laughs> as we find so I, I used to take Provigil because I have a really severe case of narcolepsy. And so I used to take the Provigil and uh, it, if you drank with that at all, it didn't affect you at all. It just be, made the Provigil that much stronger. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I was drinking. She was just metabolizing it like that, and so I was. You're drinking, drinking everybody under the table. I was drinking my Polish friend under the table, and if you know, you know. I was drinking his moonshine, and I'm just like still going, still going. He was wasted. You should not have been standing. Yeah. I, I should have been in a coma, but yeah. I was still going. And I don't drink. And I don't <coughs> drink. But if you take it with a provisional, and by the way, all over the label, do not mix with alcohol. Do not mix with alcohol. And my herbalist didn't want to do my herbs and alcohol because I was taking my provisional. And um, again, by the way, if I were going to abuse a drug, this is the one I would do. Mm. It's um, actually there's some massive percentage of CEOs use it. It's, it's basically it was meant for narcoleptics. They use it for people with chronic fatigue now because it's no longer um, the patent ran out, so it doesn't oh, okay. cost three yeah, grand. Yep. It was three grand a month before. Now the patent ran out. It's Mondafil you can get, 
and um, it used to be Pro Vigil, or I think there's New Vigil as well. But you, you know, the it's you can get a generic for like you know whatever thirty bucks, and uh, but it's a stimulant. I mean, it might as well be cocaine. <laughs> and um, you know, I, I now that they're they're short on all the ADD meds, so I don't know if that's affected the. That's because people market, are crushing but... them up, put them on paper towels, and shoving them up their butt. Oh, up their butt. That was a line from Hot Tub Time Machine. Oh, probably the greatest movie. Of I the figured last they were twenty years. No. It was, it was, Did I have so many science problems? I can't imagine inhaling anything. That would be like I do the science bomb, but like anything yeah, beyond yeah. that, like the science bomb makes me cry. I don't know. I've never done cocaine, but I hear it's fantastic. Uh, tell us. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. <laughs> we have, like, I shouldn't go we have that, like a whole bunch of friends that are sober. We're like, yeah, yeah. tell us about your. Tell us about it. <laughs> no, it, you know what? It was one of those. Actually, things they're I, usually the first ones to tell you. I never want. I I was never gravitated to that. I didn't need it. I, I, although my drug of choice is music, I would you know if, you if I didn't have music. Cocaine would not be the uh, right one. Somebody tried to actually. I've had more than one person try to give me cocaine. I'm like, yeah, no, that's not. It. I'm the kind of person you shoot with a trank gun. <laughs> I always used to joke that Arimbe. I used to joke that um, Doug. Oh wait, that I got sick, so so Doug could uh, I could keep so up, keep with, up with me. Yeah. But you know what? It's genetic. Because so I'm old. It's actually funny because you talked about your um, your parents and your owls, which again I still think happened on the same night. It's way better. Didn't happen on the same, same night. Same night, owl followed you home. <laughs> Actually, my dad used to turn into an owl on a, during a full moon and flap around. Oh, he was the superb owl. <laughs> he was the superb owl. Oh. Settle down, folks. Um, People here in Florida it. drive big trucks with little tiny wheels on them. They Is lift up the truck and they have these little low-pro tires. and they. Did I have low-pro tires? Have you seen half of the ones in the neighborhood? They usually have big tires. No, they have like those teeny low-pros. It's weird. See, so. we're used to the big tires, you know, to deal with snow. So. And down here, low pros, the spinners. I, I we saw spinners on that stupid. What was that? It was a, a Dodge Challenger, but Dodge it had Challenger lifted. It was lifted with this awful gigantic wheels. Color. With gigantic Huge wheels, wheels with super low profile on. spinners. It was. I can't even. You do can't it. even say what it is. It was spectacular, Donna. Yeah. Spectacular. spectacular. Was... My friend has problems pronouncing spectacular. Yeah. My friend, who's from Weymouth. You know if what they you say know, about Weymouth. You know. <laughs> take the people out of Weymouth, but you can't take the Weymouth oh, out of Oh, she's people. adorable. I love her to death. She's, she's the cutest. Um, so, um, anyway, back to my... Uh, Your rant my, about well, the, uh, forgiveness, provigil. Uh, provigil. Uh, not getting drunk. Um, do what you want. I don't care. You know, as long as it's not causing a problem in your life, go do what you need to do. I was going to tell a story about my grandmother. Drinking and doing well, cocaine. No, she didn't do cocaine, and that I know of. I don't, she may have. I, you know, my parents, my grandparents were so old that they might have had Coca Cola with cocaine in it. They might have had morphine for when they had a cough. See, this is the thing. This that, is the they might have been party Can I people. just tell you? Okay, so I grew up with old people. Like, my grandparents practically raised me. I was there constantly. And they just treated me like an adult. And, um, <laughs> it was just kind of a problem. But, um, <laughs> I was just thinking about how like they treated me like an adult and everything had to be just so so they were like basically an like obsessive, we want you to adult. be we, we want you to be OCD and um and anxious for the rest of your life and you, you're never going to feel like anything you've done is good enough because we will stand over your shoulder and tell you exactly how to cut the grass and if you do it wrong you're doing it again anyway not the point it's child abuse the point I don't think it's child abuse by any stretch of the imagination it's child labor at very least. Children should have chores. All the studies have indicated that. All of the studies have indicated that. Ask, ask those people in the, in the Apple factory making the iPhones. Those little kids. Big leap <laughs> between having chores mm. and the Apple factory. Seriously? I'm kidding. I am kidding. Um, I don't know anymore. So, um, what is the other one? Um... Cutting. So, what were we talking Your about? Your grandparents cutting the grass. Oh, so chores. They were very, very particular. Yeah, but how did I get over to that? From they were very particular. But what I've noticed is like, um, once you're an adult, old people, like seniors or empty. I really, I hate to say this, but anybody who's an empty nester, you could be a young empty nester, but you got stories. Right, you get stories that you've had to keep all this time because you've been a parent, and now all of a sudden you can spill the tea. But you can't spill it to children; you can spill it to adults. Mm. So as soon as you're a part of the adult club, you get to hear the mm. stuff. And actually, <laughs> this happened recently around here. Um, 
someone called and wanted to know some stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so um, when you're an adult, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you if you if I will be honest with you and I will say to you, this is how I remember my story and you should ask questions. But let me tell you, your grandparents have the tea. They have all the answers. Sit with them. Spend time with them. Ask them questions. Write it all down. It's you wouldn't believe the stuff and how it comes back later, like the stories that they will share with you and how they later affect you and, and people in those stories. So I have I have a story that is about my grandma Lucy that it wraps back to your death thing and I thought I would share it. So Lucy was my dad's stepmom. So they weren't, um, he, she wasn't biologically his mom, but she was the only grandmother I knew. I didn't know my biological grandmother. I met her like three times or something, but I, I didn't know her. Um, my dad didn't speak to her, and um, I, uh, yeah, I don't really know much more, much more than that. I know that he did not have an easy life himself, so that's why it's pretty easy to forgive him for my childhood. So anyway, not the point. The point is, Lucy was my grandmother for all intents and purposes, and she was amazing. The woman was a single mother in 1960. She lived in the Shalimar Apartments, Shalimar. which is where they would put like the single mothers or, you know, and that's why they and, call it the Shalimar. And, um, it, it was, you know, that was not a time to be a single parent. So she had my uncle and then, um, she met my grandfather and, um, my, my dad was a few years older than my uncle. So they would like hang out or whatever. And then my, um, my, uh, my grandparents got married in 76. And so anyway, my grandmother had breast cancer in 76 and instead of it being, um, you know, like a lump, like you would feel a lump and, and, you know, go to your doctor and say, Hey, what is this? And of course they didn't even know that back then. Mm. But in my grandmother's case, it was like sand and it went from here all the way over into her breast. And, um, and she was very, she was a small busted woman. And so she, um, they found the cancer and back then it was 76. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. So they were like, Oh, we're going to cut your tits off. Okay. They cut her tits off. I don't think that's what the doctor said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, okay. I'm pretty sure that's not what the doctor said. Okay. But, um, so then she had implants. And, um, so my grandmother, oh my God, you guys would love her. She's, oh, she was absolutely hilarious. And, um, she was like, she knew all the gossip on everybody and she would tell everybody. <laughs> so she was like the family gossip. And, um, so I would just like go hang out with her and like listen to her tell stories and like people I didn't even know. I was like watching daytime television. She was amazing. And she would tell me about, um, you know, the girls at the Shalimar apartments and like going to um, Colt State Park and, you know, going to Lincoln Park and just, just doing different things. And um, I don't know. She was just the best. And when she was, there's, I have so many stories I have, I like about Lucy that are not even like, I could just do a week of Lucy stories. But when she got, she had, eventually she ended up having five different cancers. And then finally it got to her liver and liver cancer survival rate's not very high. Although our friend Gordon has done great. Go Gordy. Gordy. Um, and, um, but my grand, in my grandmother's case, it was, it was, she was done. And so it was a matter of, uh, it was a matter of like a week. It was, I think it was 10 days. And, um, I had been, I had, I had been sick, so I hadn't called and I, like, I knew she was home from the hospital, but I didn't know what was going on. And so, um, I had to go to New York for a job interview. When I came home, I had a fever like 104, so I couldn't even go there. So two days, two days later, I finally come through. So it was like three days. I didn't talk to her. I called, they wouldn't put her on the phone. I called again, they wouldn't put her on the phone. Nobody told me that she'd like slipped off into oblivion. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm coming down there. So anyway, I brought my daughters to go say goodbye to her. And she was catatonic at this point. It wasn't, it wasn't pretty. She was like, not even using that for the lash. thumbnail, by the way, for oh, YouTube. Good times. Uh, and she looked like a shriveled, like little apple. You remember those apple yeah, head dolls apple you had to heads, make? Yeah. So she she kind of started to look like that at the end because she wasn't drinking mm -hmm. or like they don't give you any food. And so, um, I tried to kill her. That's a whole other story. Uh, I didn't. Um, so anyway, she, um, so she, so my kids all hugged her and said goodbye to her. And so of course we leave there and, uh, it wasn't, 
it wasn't for a couple more days, but we leave there and I said that she died, but I leave there and I said, girls, I said, I know that that was really hard, but you know, it, it's important to say goodbye and you know, whatever. And I, I also didn't know how bad she was. I probably wouldn't have taken them if I had known how bad she was, but they would have wanted to go. So I probably would have taken them. Ah, anyway, should have, could have, would have, who knows? She, um, so I said to the kids, what song makes you think of grandma Lucy? And in unison, they said the tide is high by Blondie. I flipped the station. Tide is high by Blondie, which is what that came out in what eighty six, eighty. What are the odds that it's going to be on maybe. the radio in two thousand twelve? Two thousand twelve? No, I think it was two thousand eleven. It was two thousand eleven. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that um, I think that people. Um, I, I I don't know whether it's that people's energy stays with you or their memory stays with you, their voice stays with you, but I or that there's you know that they're their um their soul is still in communication with us or some souls are still in communication with us or they're not or if we're just hallucinating or maybe the yeah, whole thing's just we're just the in the god maybe the whole thing's just a goddamn uh, simulation who the fuck knows mm. Interesting. but uh you know we had a shitty day and we turned it into we but we, we we're gonna still find things to be grateful for i think the podcast got a little dark the whole jesus thing and the death thing but i think we uh, we, we pulled it out of a nosedive today i think it was a pretty uh, good one uh i don't know that it was really a nosedive but i think that like sometimes we're gonna be funny the whole time mm -hmm. sometimes we're not gonna be funny you're never gonna know what the hell was gonna come out of my mouth mm -hmm. Uh, we would like to be doing like having like four or five set topics that we you know that we're oh yeah we're gonna touch on this and work around to the next topic, but again it hasn't been a good week, um, and um, you know so I, I'd like to run down a quick list of what we're grateful for today because uh, I think it, especially on your bad days you really need to think about what you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I am uh, I'm grateful that we beat so many levels in Mario today. Mm -hmm. That was that was rough, I, for me anyways. Like it, it it like only like rates on my nerves because there's it's like so high tension. You're trying to jump over lava, and there's fire. Yeah, but we up have and... we have levels that we play to make us feel better about yeah, ourselves. Right. So the levels the easy that are really levels, easy. Yeah. You just go. Do you want to feel better about yourself? And then we play yeah. that level. Um, and now we found a trick on world uh, one three yeah. to get unlimited lives. Mm -hmm. It's very very easy. You just need the helicopters from level one. Yeah. PM me. I'll tell you how to do it. Well, we got to give Nolan credit for that. That was one. Nolan. It's all Nolan. Nolan. Nolan shared that one with us. I thought I was the queen of the Mario tricks. I looked mm. them up the whole time I'm mm. playing. Uh, but nope, Nolan yeah. Nolan, Nolan uh, dropped the hammer on that one because I was going to 2 3. Right. To get and that those one's lives a hard one. To it's do, hard. Yeah. You have to go through yeah. this whole flaming level and flip a turtle. It's a pain yeah. in the ass. Anyway. Um, I'm grateful that uh, we got so far in Mario today um, because it was a, you needed the distraction between mm. all the jobs you were applying for. Mm. Um, I'm actually grateful for um, something that I, I, I read uh, just prior to, to doing the podcast. Um, somebody posted on LinkedIn um, a comment about how if, if you're a creative, which I am, um, and you're worried about being replaced by AI, um, you probably weren't a creative in the first place and that you, you can't be replaced. And, and so that leads us to something like this podcast. It's like a human interaction. It's real. It's real stories. It's and you, you know, obviously somebody's going to be able to make that up on a, uh, on a, a robot chat GBT at some point, but they can't right now. So hopefully this is some sort of interesting, um, you know, service that we're providing with this podcast. But, it, you know, for me anyways, it's like music's going to be, design's already being done by AI, but there's, you know, things like ideas and things like that that I, I really don't know that um, that an inanimate object can come up with because I don't, they can make correlations to things, right? It's but still they can't. very, it's still very clunky, for lack mm. of a better term. You have to ask the right question the right way to get the answer you want, mm. especially because these things are part of the narrative, mm. meaning if there is a status quo opinion about something, ChatGPT will regurgitate it back to you. Mm -hmm. So whatever that is. Um, and um, the problem with that is that it, um, people are going to start using it to replace writing, which means it's going to start to replace journalism. And I think journalism has already been replaced in this country with, I don't know, like a puppet show, whatever the fuck it is. Well, I think, it's a disaster. I, I think too, it's like you've... Um, Oh, it's water dripping on me. Go ahead. <laughs> there, um, the thing with the, the AI is like I, I, I'm worried that people won't know any better. They won't know the difference between 
AI are music, a AI design, and whatever, and they'll People just settle for it because when I I saw in my career the advent of a computer, and so it turned something that was crafted and typeset and Listen. worked on, and then com the computers came along, and then the web came along. So then it became more about the speed you could get it done than how good it was. So I think this whole thing. Well, it's going end up away. Come, it'll it'll like no, it'll I'm come you, we're, we're it'll coming, come back we're around. We're going to have the, a renaissance. We're going to have a renaissance that's coming soon. It's going to be all about art and music, and and um, artisan artisan everything. Like artisan sandwiches would artisan with, sandwiches like not at uh, Panera. Thank you very much. Or Subway was it? Who said that they had oh, artisan? Oh, I don't know. I, Some yeah. idiot. I think anything like with oats. Um, on I think top anything of the bread small batch and artisan. local. Anything small batch and local is going to go through the roof. You're going to see, you're going to see a um, people are going to be making clothes again. Oh. I think you're going to see people wanting one of a kind everything, yeah. and people wanting to express themselves in an artistic way. And um, I and I hate to say it, but where given where AI is, is that a lizard on the on the glass at the very top with the two doors meet? No, I think it might be. Look no, closer. That's a lock. Uh, or like a bracket thing. No. No, it's on the outside. And it's... I think that's a fucking lizard, Doug. I'm gonna go, go walk over. I'm gonna look. Doug's going on a lizard check. Lizard check coming. Ah, it's gone. Lizard was... I was right. It was a lizard. Where'd it go? It ran up in the ceiling. It was a lizard. It Can I tell you? Here? I was thinking of it. It was on that piece at the very top. Yeah. And it was sticking straight right. down, and so much that it's you thought it was a lock, and I'm like, no, it's not. Less Can I just tell you how many times? Actually, this is this. What am I doing wrong that when I say something to people, they don't believe me? I believed you that someone was there. I just didn't see it. I don't have my glasses on. I know. But I said on. no. It's a lizard. You're like, no, it's the bolt for the door. And I'm I like, thought no, you meant it's that thing. Yeah, I and saw something. So what? Like, I was. Go ahead. No, say it. I was what? You were right. I <gasps> did, I didn't disagree <gasps> that there was a lizard. I just didn't see it. And I got up to get a closer look and scared the lizard. Thank you very you much. You didn't disagree that there was a lizard? Would no. Would you like to rewind uh, the tape? Yes, mm. I would because you were like, that thing right there. I'm like, that thing? It's a, that's part of the lock for And the, I said it wasn't. I said it's the lizard. It's okay. on the door. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I Marital didn't, hate. I didn't <laughs> dispute that there was one. Rewind the tape. I didn't dispute anything about the lizard being there. You know what? Because we have a lizard that lives right over there in the railing of, of the pool cage. And uh, so it's not like I like if you said there was a dodo bird or a woolly mammoth, I would have probably contested that because right now science hasn't caught up with it yet. There are no such things as a woolly mammoth, but a lizard completely plausible. You did not say that is not a lizard. I thought you were talking about the bracket to the thing because I didn't see the lizard. I'm nearsighted. You have your contacts in. I do not. I don't know what to tell you. But I don't. <laughs> That's an inside joke. A muck sticky song. That's good stuff. Mm. When I fuck up, I say I, didn't, I was wrong. I never said there's no lizard there. I'm like, Marital where hate. is it? Where is it? Where is it? Marital hate. Well, that's Marital hate. Well, well, that was a fun episode. Um, so you have not done your... I don't know what you're thankful oh, for. My, I'm grateful that nothing really bad um, came in the mail today. Um, <laughs> I'm grateful for, um... So, so, okay, so we're supposed to do ten. I do one, okay. you do one, I okay. do one, you... I, but, like, I you, was, you're grateful nothing bad came in the mail today. Do you I can be grateful for that. Yeah, but do you think that that's a good energy to have? It's things are turning around. That's why it's a good energy. So how about we go with that wording? Okay. Things are turning around. Things are turning around, folks. Things are turning that's around. That's what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for cannabis oil. Oh, because I don't think I could have gotten through today without it. Hmm. Go ahead. I am thankful for cooking lunch and then having the lunch leftovers for dinner. I am grateful for my leftover gelati that I took two bites of the other day that I'm going to take two more bites of today, hmm. even though I'm not supposed to have it's it. It's the gelati that keeps giving. I'm thankful for the um, gelati company that we've discovered down the street, Jeremiah's. He is not a bullfrog. Apparently, after all, he was uh, an ice Italian ice vendor this whole time. Um, they do a Italian ice. It's Italian ice, soft serve ice cream. Italian ice, soft serve ice cream. They call it a gelati. Amazing. So I got the um, 
key lime this time. Last time I had the strawberry lemon. Strawberry lemon. And I had pina and I, colada. He's done pina colada <laughs> twice. I eat like two bites. Put it away. Two bites. Yeah. Two bites. It lasts me mm. a whole week. So that's pretty good. Mm. Um, although we may have to cut it out of the budget. So. And while we're still working on our Culver's scam, okay, so we, we, we sign we up even, for the I told the you to logos. go to Culver's today and you didn't do it. Okay, so I said, I said the, um, I said the Mario levels. You said, um, the, the things are turning around. Things are turning around. I said the creative thing that I saw on, because I'm grateful for that, because that was, that was. Okay, so you've done three and have I done, I'm grateful for badass women like my grandmother Lucy. I think that's four for me, actually. Mm. And how many did we do? Ten? Five each. Five each. Um, I would say I, um, I'm i grateful that I was able to do some of the self-care items today. I did the sauna. Mm. <laughs> I, Why is it that you did the self-care things today? Huh? Why is it that you did Because you nag me about them. Do you think I enjoy nagging you? No. Do you think that that turns me on? Well, it might. I don't know. You do it a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's humorous. So I'm going to go watch The Handmaid's Tale oh. by myself and mm. think to myself, mm. hmm. <laughs> that wouldn't be such a bad option compared to being married to me. No. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes mm. I... You would rather be held down and raped and give birth to some guy's child forcibly than be married to me. That's marital hate, folks. I Ask yourself that. that. I wouldn't say that. However, however, sometimes, sometimes I feel, and I'm using my oh, your feel parts. I'm, I'm, I feel there's a part of me that feels like no one taught you how to express your feelings appropriately. Probably not. And so. Or how to take care of yourself and be a person. And I feel like I'm trying to do that. <laughs> and um, I feel like I'm trying to do that, but you resent it. And it's like having teenagers again. And that was not a good experience for me. Mm. So, yeah, sometimes being a handmaid doesn't seem all that bad. And I realize, I realize how horrific that is. But sometimes I want anybody's life but mine, no matter how good my life is. I, I want it. And then you obviously you realize there's always somebody who has it better than you. There's always somebody that has it worse. But when you you feel stuck in a situation, and I'm not saying I feel stuck in my marriage, but I am stuck in my marriage. I committed to my marriage. And despite the fact that I was divorced, it was not an easy decision for me. Um, I have to... It's the biggest challenge for me as your spouse, um, and I think this is a thing in a lot of marriages because I've talked to other people about it, is that I will say the same thing to you 50 times mm -hmm. and you will completely ignore me. You will argue the point and someone else will say that same thing one time and he's like, oh, okay. And it's like, wow. And and I real I, I don't know what it is. I... Um, I don't know what it is, but it's it's hard because I like I want us to be on the same team. Um, I want us to be in a good place. I want positive vibes in our lives. I want to spread positive vibes to other people. And so all I can do is my best and ask you for feedback when I need it. And you know what? Y'all are, you have a window in. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> um, I, um, I just, you know, I, I wish, I wish life was easier. For everybody, and I wish for good yeah. things for everybody. And you know what? We had a shitty day, but you know what? We got to process it, and we had some fun laughs. And we try and again tomorrow. We learned that it's actually two different stories about dead right. parents. Um, I have the one with my grandmother. I also have one with my grandfather George. Actually, that's pretty funny. I'll tell it real quick because we can end on up oh, note. So my um, my grandfather. Um, retired from the telephone company after a bajillion years. He was a um, World War II veteran, and um, he had a bronze star, star. He was in the 9th Infantry, and he toured everywhere, including Normandy Beach. And my grandfather, um, he was, so he was German, um, very stubborn. He fought for America, though. He just fought for we, America. Clear, like, we had to clarify that. He had, like, he was on the good side. His, he had brought back, like, 
armbands from the war, and uh, there were a lot of them. I don't think he's supposed to have those. Well, he doesn't have any more. I think they donated them to the Historical Society, or I don't know, burnt them or something. But but he did have them at one point. Um, and uh, but you know, he he was a war hero. Um, back when, like before we, you know, before things got more controversial, I guess. Um, but he was a war hero, and so um, my grandfather. Um, and he was my great grandfather was um gustav was a um a chicken farmer he owned a chicken farm in freetown so my grandfather had had a very strict life and then of course the military and his dad was hard on him and so he was very regimented and so um when once he retired and i needed a ride to school i went to school in fall river and my grandparents lived in somerset and so we would have to leave an hour early before school in case the bridge opened. In case the bridge opened. Okay, so I think the Brightman Street Bridge opened twice ever. When Gloria Stefan's, um, oh, sorry, it got backed up. The Gloria Stefan's tour bus got, got um, flipped over on the Braga Bridge. So traffic got backed up and there was a jumper. But oh. never was the bridge open on our way to school, like, I don't think ever. So maybe once. So my grandfather would bring me to school an hour early. You can't just like get, drop a kid off. I was like 10, I don't know, how old was I? Maybe 10, 11, whatever, sixth grade. What's sixth grade? 10, 11, 11. 12. So, I, yeah, I must have been about 12. So my grandfather <laughs> would take me at like six o'clock in the morning to the bait shop. <laughs> And give, me a, shop. and give me a Snickers bar and a Coke before school. Because that's what every 10-year-old spaz with ADD needs. Or maybe my grandfather. Because, you know, they give stimulants to people with ADD. Maybe my mm. grandfather. Oh, he was trying to help. Maybe he maybe he deserves the uh, yeah, right The fishy the smell that you went to Adderall. school with didn't help, though. <laughs> I really don't think that um, my... my my middle school experience was traumatic enough. Now enough. we're throwing the fishy smell in there. Okay, school. Great. I'm going to kill myself now. Thank you. Um, I'm not actually going to kill myself now. If I do, it'll be much later. <laughs> Maybe like, I don't know, 3 a.m. Right after, like, I don't know, right after I finish what I have to finish watching The Handmaid's oh, Tale. Then I'll think yeah, about it. it. I'm on the season two now, Ugh. so you got at least like a couple Ugh. days. Anyway, um, I have to finish Boston. where I start. Not the point. The point. Yeah, they had the hanging at Fenway Park. Um... I wonder if these like little asides other people get. I'm, I'm hoping they're starting to get them and they're starting to flow with us. So um, so anyway, my grandfather died and um, and like I... Um, Spoiler alert, grandpa dies. Well, yeah, he died. And uh, ever since then, I haven't been able to go over a stupid drawbridge without the thing opening. Like I, um, it's, it's uncanny. I have not gone over a draw... Didn't we even have the bridge in Bridgeton opened on us? The bridge in um, downtown um, in um, Naples, that drawbridge there. Oh yeah, on yeah, us yeah we day. did. Yeah. I've had the Four River Bridge in, open on me at least three times. I was in Florida in um, Lauderdale a couple years ago, and uh, sure enough, the uh, the bridge opened. Like I can't. I can't. So anyway, um, so I, we're we're talking a lot about um, messages from beyond. Yes, do you yeah, have a message from one. beyond? If you have one, share it with us. Love yeah. to hear it. Well, we got to just zoop in with our... Zoop in. Zoop. Let's zoop in, zoop in with our, our, um, our loyal listeners, or listener, as the case may be. Hmm. Tracy, um, you were right. The government can escalate all they want, but they move at a snail's pace because... Um, I don't know. The larger bureaucracy is, the less efficient it is, and um, these people have limitless dollars because mm. they just take it out of your paycheck. <laughs> Hashtag taxation is theft. Um, and um, let's see what else. Uh, Tom commented that he could hear us fine, which is good because it was pouring. And uh, the we elements. appreciate you guys just tuning in. Uh, my 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 friend Todd was here at one point. Um, Todd's always. God, love him to death. He's been so supportive, and I really appreciate it. He always checks in, both to see how I'm feeling, and he, and he gets excited about the podcast. Which and there's there's uh, four people watching, so wow, yeah, that's it. I, that's that's it. I've got for comments. I don't know. Yeah. I don't see anything. Um, but we really appreciate you guys watching, and uh, let us know what you want to see more of. Let us know what you want to see less of. Let us know if we need to break bring the show inside for the rain. Uh, perhaps. Where would we shoot in the house? Hmm. Maybe the dolphin table. Yeah, but you can't see the table. No, but, you know. I think we should find... Or maybe we have, like, a fireside chat. We don't have a fireplace. It's Florida. 
So I don't, I don't think I want to light a, a fire. The, the only reason we're going to go inside is because it's a monsoon mm. or it's too hot. Right. right. So I don't think that those are times when you're going to have a fire. No. Maybe we, uh, the tub. We can go in the, like, the bathroom. Our tub is very small. Right. And our toilet seat is this broken. Toilet seat's broken. <laughs> our toilet seat broke. My fat ass. I'm sitting on the toilet seat. It broke. It's the original toilet seat to the house from 1983. It's seen a lot. It was already of, worn through. Wear. Like it's not yeah. like white. It's like, and we touched up the paint, but it's it's worn yeah. through. I broke the toilet seat, and now it has a crack in it. And if you sit on that toilet seat, it pinches your butt. And so I was like, "Hey, can you glue it, please?" I didn't have any glue. I, thought, glue. I didn't have anything that I could glue that with, so I just put <laughs> I put, put gorilla tape on, tape on it. So instead of putting glue on it, trying glue oh. tape. I put tape on it. It's a fourteen dollar part. We'll have to, you know. We'll have to, we'll, we are looking, saving up for a toilet saving seat. Saving up for a toilet If Doug gets a job, the first thing we will buy, we'll buy a is a toilet seat. seat. What are you going to do? So, if you, know, if, you know, if you know anybody out there that's looking for uh, a, toilet seat? A, a designer mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, like just slightly better than AI, yeah, have them give me a call. You're not slightly better than AI. You're brilliant at design mm. work. You have a million ways that you have been driving me completely insane. But you are absolutely brilliant when it comes to design work, and you're absolutely brilliant when it comes to your music. Mm. That's all I got. Mm. I'm gonna watch the rest mm. of the Handmaid's Tale and eat my gelati. Would you please get it for me? <laughs> I will take care of it. I will thank everybody for watching or not watching, as the case may be. You know who you are. Yeah, fuck you, people. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, guys.